Tomodachi life is sublime, guys. There aren't many life sims out there quite like it. Its quirky themes and bizarre sense of humor help it stand out from other games in the genre. In case you're not in the loop, Tomodachi Life is a 3DS game released on June 6, 2014 in North America and is a sequel to a game called Tomodachi Collection, a DS game that was only released in Japan. You add me characters of your family, friends, fictional characters, celebrities, or whoever else you feel like and you take care of them, watch them form relationships with each other, and take part in a wide array of wacky shenanigans that may make you giggle. I've always had a thing for life sim games. It all started with Sims 2 Pets for the GBA, which I played religiously as a kid. Years later, it evolved into Animal Crossing New Leaf, which is one of my favorite games ever. And then about two years after that, Tomodachi Life was released. What do you do when you're a 10 year old kid going on a fishing trip five hours away and need entertainment? You pick up Nintendo's latest quirky life sim, of course. And yes, this game kept me occupied for the entire 10 hour round trip. This game caught my attention for a number of reasons. For starters, it featured the Miis. A game featuring the Miis had not let me down up until that point. I obviously did not play Wii Music as a kid, so I had to pick it up. Also, this game was unlike the other life sims I had played, because in this one, your Miis can have... Sexual intercourse. Yeah, so the fact that there was romance and your Miis could fall in love and get married and have kids together was a huge selling point for me. I would never admit this to anyone, so I just told people I wanted it because, oh, I want it because it looks funny, you can do funny stuff in it. I first played it by renting it for my local family video, and about a month later in November, I got it for my 11th birthday, and right there was the birth of another childhood classic for me. Tomodachi Life wasn't the deepest, most profound game I played while growing up, but it did keep me entertained for many hours. The 3DS library was full of bangers, and Tomodachi Life is one of the many that I want to talk about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I inject this questionable amount of 3DS nostalgia directly into your veins. Because my 3DS doesn't have a capture card yet due to To capture footage for this episode, we'll be firing up Citra where we will be booting up my 100% legally acquired ROM of Tomodachi Life that I dumped from my personal 3DS. Here we have a deserted island that we have been given ownership of. The first step is naming the island. Better think of something clever because you can't change it later. I wanted to pick a name that truly encompasses the values of my island. After a very rare thinking session, I remembered that this game does not include same-sex relationships. This is obviously a big no-no, so I decided to come up with a name that promotes man-on-man, woman-on-woman, stuff like that. The 10-year-old kid on Xbox didn't refer to me as Aaron's gay hub for nothing. I thought long and hard about a name that would make my island more inclusive and welcoming to my good friends in the LGBTQ community. I was not about to let them down. After a few weeks, it came to me. Urethra! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gay Sex Island, where gay sex is completely banned. The next step is to fill the island with people. It all starts by creating a me that represents you. First off, what they did here is genius. As you're looking after the me's over the course of the game, they will be talking to you, the real life version of you, as if you're your own person. Well, that can't work because how can you be able to have your own me on the island while also having the me's constantly break the fourth wall as real life you is directly interacting with them? You can't just not have your own me on the island. The solution is quite simple, actually. You and your me are two separate people. There's Aaron, the me, and then there's Aaron's lookalike, the player. The other me simply refer to you as your own person that looks exactly like your me. That way the player can interact directly with the me's and you can still have your own me on the island to represent you and partake in all the wacky shenanigans and sexual escapades. I thought this was really clever. I never would have thought of this in a million years. So anyway, you add your me to the island. You can either create it from scratch or import it from the 3DS Meat Plaza. You then have to assign different traits to your me, which the game will use to create their personality. This will affect their dialogue in the same way as an Animal Crossing game where different personality groups will be assigned different pools of dialogue. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the dialogue is the only thing that the me's personality affects. Of course it affects smaller things, like the speed that you give them will affect their walking and eating speed, but I don't think it affects anything like relationship compatibility. You can also customize the voice of your Miis, but I usually just stick with the default options because when I mess with the tone or pitch too much, it makes the voice kind of annoying for me. The next step is to start filling your island with other people. I usually start by adding my close friends, then I'll add my family members, and last I'll add some minor acquaintances. Also, it's important to mention that the game has you specify the Mii's relationship to the real-life version of you. That way you don't have any weird incestual stuff going on. However, this feature is of course disabled if you have your region and your 3DS's settings set to Southern US. After populating my island with Mii's, what I'll usually come to realize is that, aside from some family members, my island is exclusively men. That means it's time to add some... Women. 
Yeah, I never really talked to many girls in real life, so that usually meant that, outside of family members, the ladies on my island would usually consist of my friends, girlfriends, and some girls that are completely made up. Yes, my bloodline is fucked. Anyway, the island has officially been populated. What do you do now? The gameplay of Tomodachi Life revolves around solving your islanders' problems. Solving problems for your Miis will make them gain XP for leveling up. Every time a Mii levels up, you have the option of five different rewards that you can give them. My go-to is the gift option, where you can give them some sort of item that you will sometimes see them play with when you're not interacting with them. You can give them some cool stuff like a Wii U, a 3DS, a punching bag, or a scale, for some reason. Aaron, you coming out with us tonight? Chepeki's gonna be there! She's totally into you, bro! Uh, no thanks, I already have plans. Some of these gifts don't really make sense, but this game as a whole doesn't make sense, so who am I to question it? You can also give the Islanders a nice new interior, a new catchphrase, a new song genre to sing at the concert hall, or pocket money. You can also give them new clothes and hats once they reach level 20. As far as the actual problems you will be solving, the types of problems your Mies can have are broken down into five unofficially named categories. Normal, Game, Sadness, Friendship, and Love. The normal problems are the most common and basic problems that your Mii can have and are indicated by this black icon. It's usually just something like, they want some new clothes, they want a new catchphrase, the little asshole is hungry, just get the damn food yourself. Mostly just basic stuff like that. Sometimes you'll get some more interesting ones that will lead to some wacky scenario playing out. For example, there's one where the me gets a note from a stranger to meet on the roof, and another islander will appear wearing a disguise and start babbling some incoherent nonsense. Ones like that are always fun and part of the charm of Tomodachi life. Random quirky little events that could potentially make you giggle. One criticism that I'll talk more about later, however, is that a lot of these scenarios feel like they play out too often. There's not a ton of variety. They're funny the first few times, but after meeting a stranger on the roof for the 13th time that week, it starts to get pretty stale. But like I said, more on that later. The next category of Islander problem is when your Islanders want to play a game, which is indicated by this green icon. These are just fun little mini-games like various quizzes, a game of catch, a game of football where you just mash the touchscreen, stuff like that. Again, there's not a ton of variety with the games, it feels like I'm constantly being quizzed on something. The games are some decent fun though, I just wish there were more different kinds of games. After winning one of the mini-games, you have a choice between a small, medium, or large prize which you can sell at the pawn shop for some extra cash to spend on your islanders. If you lose the game, the me will give you toilet paper or a box of tissues to wipe your tears with, which you can still sell at the pawn shop for a crisp dollar bill, so eat shit, Jebeki! Speaking of tears, the next problem you'll encounter is depression. After a me goes through something like a breakup, rejection, or divorce, you'll see this blue icon appear. The Mii's XP meter will turn from orange to blue, and it's your job to lower this meter by giving the Mii food and gifts and whatnot. The next two problems directly involve relationship stuff. There's four main subcategories of relationships in Tomodachi life. Friend, best friend, sweetheart, and spouse. None of these relationships are permanent, as your Mii's can stop being friends, break up, or even get divorced. The relationships are associated with two separate problems. The first one is a friendship problem, indicated by this orange icon. This is usually just that the me wants to be friends with a certain other me, and they need your approval before they can do it. They'll ask what they should talk about to help them get along, and I don't think what you choose has any effect on what happens, so I'm not sure what the point of the prompt even is. The me will go over to the other me's apartment, and the process begins. They both start babbling, and if they successfully become friends, this happens. If things don't work, they just stare at each other awkwardly. Mies can also become friends when one invites both of them over and tries to introduce them to each other. Another situation you may encounter is that a me will mention the status of their friendship with another me, and based on what you respond with, their friendship status will increase, decrease, or stay the same. Another problem indicated by the orange icon is that two of your Mii's got in a fight in which you need to calm them down with something like a music box or a bath before they can go make up. There are some fights that are so intense that there's no calming the Mii down and you just have to wait for another islander to step in and solve the problem. In both scenarios, it's possible that one Mii won't forgive the other Mii and the friendship will end. Lastly, sometimes a me with a problem will say that one of their friends needs a sweetheart and will attempt to hook them up with one of their other friends. You then get this fun cutscene where they're on a date together and the me that set them up is watching them from afar. Sometimes this will end in a relationship, but I feel like it fails way more often than not. It's pretty rare that it actually works out. Also, I'm not sure why this one is labeled as a friendship problem and not a love problem. I guess it's because the me doesn't personally have a love problem, it's just between their friends. Before we dive into the love-related problems, let's preface by going over how relationships work. The first thing we have to mention is that the game separates the Mii's into two categories, the grown-up category and the child category. This is obviously to keep adults from dating children, which is pretty based on Nintendo's part, but this system has a few problems. There is a hard boundary between who is considered a child and who is considered a grown-up. 
A me that is 17 is still labeled as a child, while a me that is 18 is labeled as a grown-up. This means that in some scenarios, me's that are only one year apart cannot be in a relationship. Now, I know some people have some very strong opinions about what age gaps are acceptable, so this is not a can of worms I want to publicly open online, but I think all reasonable people will agree that it's a little weird that a 17-year-old can't be in a relationship with an 18-year-old. This is kind of a tricky situation given how strongly people feel about this, so I don't blame Nintendo for how they handled it. The way I would have done it is make it so that as long as the age gap means that they could both be in high school together at some point, then it would be allowed. I can already sense some people shaking their fists at the screen and saying, but that means a senior in high school would be able to date a freshman! What a stupid idea! And while I understand your concern, you need to understand that with the game's current rules on dating, a 17-year-old can date an actual 2-year-old, so really we can only go up from here. Also, as I mentioned while naming the island, the game does not support same-sex relationships. This made playing the game increasingly frustrating as I got older and met more types of people because I couldn't have them properly represented on the island. Much more importantly, if you yourself are gay, I'd imagine it's at least 10 times more frustrating not having a me on the island that actually represents you. This is one of those things where Nintendo just barely got away with it back in 2014, but we've progressed enough since then that it just wouldn't fly if it were released now. Even back in the day, Nintendo of America apologized for the lack of same-sex relationships and promised that future installments would include it. It's been nearly 10 years and we have not heard so much as a rumor of a new one, so maybe now they just regret even making the game in the first place. Still holding out hope that they'll release a port on Switch with gay support. Anyway, that's the gist of how relationships work. That leads us into the last and most rare type of problem you'll encounter, a love-related problem. And if you've played this game before, you know how exhilarating it is to open your game and see that little pink heart on your apartment building. I've had some pretty exciting things happen in my life. There was a time I lowballed the absolute shit out of an old classmate to get Black and White 2 for only 40 bucks. I once went streaking at my local Arby's. I've made eye contact with a girl in class for two seconds and fantasized about a relationship for the next two years until she got a boyfriend. But none of that compares to seeing that one of your me's has a love problem. Such an exciting moment in the game. I am great with this sort of thing. I am the guy to go to for relationship advice. So... How'd it go? She hanged herself right in front of me. The most common type of problem is that one of your me's has feelings for another me. You have a choice of where you want the me to confess their feelings at, along with how you want them to confess their feelings. Romantic, traditional, showy, that sort of thing. Like most things in the game, this doesn't have any effect on the outcome of the relationship. It's purely for show. A few different things can happen during the confession. The me can say yes to the confessor and everyone's happy and they have a gay old time, but not actually gay because that's not allowed. Or the me can reject the other me and they'll become depressed and probably listen to Vermilion Part 2 and Snuff by Slipknot on repeat. However, sometimes the rejected me won't take no for an answer and will fight for the love of their life and try to confess again. In my experience, this always ends in rejection. I've never seen it work out. Probably a lesson somewhere in here. One of the more interesting scenarios that can play out is that another me will show up during the confession and will also admit their feelings, and the me will have to choose between which me they want. Sometimes a me will confess to a me that's already in a relationship, and they can still say yes, but it results in an off-screen breakup and the me that got cucked will become depressed. And the last scenario is that the me that's being confessed to won't even show up. <laughs> I've had situations before where the me doesn't show up and the confessor is like, I'm not giving up, I'm going to fight for them! And then they try to confess a second time and they still don't show up. Another love-related problem is when your me wants to propose to their sweetheart. If you decide to let them go through with their proposal, you then have to go through one of the most stressful minigames I have ever played in my entire life. You have to wait to mash a button on the touchscreen while the me being proposed to is thinking about the other me, and if you mistime it, you lose a life. But you only have three lives and you have to successfully time it four times. It also doesn't help that there's a heartbeat sound effect playing in the background because the devs thought, oh, it needs to be just a little bit more stressful. If you somehow successfully complete the minigame, the Mies will get married, they move into Mii homes together, and they live happily ever after. 50% of the time. One day you'll find one of your married islanders with a love-related problem. That most likely means it's baby time. They'll say something to the effect of, me and so-and-so are thinking about having a baby, which is basically the PG way you would tell someone such as your father-in-law, I'm going to start railing your daughter every night without a condom until the pregnancy test comes out positive. You of course have the chance to tell them if you want them to go through with it or not, but if you never want any mating to occur on your island, there's actually an in-game setting to turn off babies. This will make it so married couples won't even ask if they should have a baby in the first place. I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but it's there. It could just be for people who are squeamish at even the mere suggestion of sex, but as someone who has been born before, I'm a huge advocate for baby making, so I always turn babies on. Please do not clip that. So let's say you give them the go-ahead to make a baby. The couple will get busy that night, and the very next morning, you'll have a baby. 
I don't know what they're putting in the water here on the island, but these mothers are freaks of nature. Their ability to develop fetuses and slurp them out is second to none. As the couple shows you the baby, you basically get the choice of the gender, but you can just let it be a surprise if you want. The baby's face will, of course, look like a cross between the mother and the father, but you can edit it if you want. The parents will start rattling off potential names for the baby, and you can pick one you like or just think of one yourself. Lastly is the personality. The baby can either take after the mother, father, have a randomly generated one, or of course you can create the personality yourself. Loads of control here. The baby grows over the course of six days, and during that time you'll have a babysitting option where you can go and visit the baby. Depending on how old the baby is at the time, there's a different minigame you get to play with it. During the first day, sometimes the baby won't stop crying and the couple will ask you to rock the baby to sleep, in which you have to gently rock your 3DS until the baby falls asleep. The minigame is damn near impossible in my experience, but if you do manage to get the baby to sleep, you'll get a little reward for your troubles. I personally strive to never be good at things I don't want to do, so when I get roped into this crap, I shake the little goblin as if I'm shaking a Wii game with shitty motion controls until the angry couple yells at me to give the baby back. On the second and third day, you play a game of peekaboo with the baby. Same idea as last time, get the thing to stop crying. I've seen YouTube videos of people hitting the baby, but I've never been able to get it to work, unfortunately. On days four and five, it's less of a baby and more of a small child. You use the touchscreen to spin it around in circles. Weirdly enough, this is the only minigame where you can't seem to harm the child. Finally, at six days old, the kid is finally ready to be off on its own. You have a choice between letting it have an apartment on the island and become a regular islander, or let it travel, meaning it will temporarily show up on other players' islands via Street Pass. God, Street Pass was so cool. Next, you see a family photo album, and then the credits roll. Good lord, I spent a long time talking about babies. I'm running out of time to talk about divorce. When a me wants a divorce or a breakup, it's technically labeled as a friendship problem for some reason, but I thought it fit better in this section. Divorce and breakups work pretty much the same with only a few differences. The Mies will meet in a cafe or something and one will say something like, I want to go back to being friends, and boom, marriage or relationship terminated. One difference between a divorce and a regular breakup is that a divorce cannot be caused by another islander confessing feelings to a married islander. Also, Mies cannot get divorced if they still have a kid in the house, because I guess that would be too serious of a topic to handle in a lighthearted game such as this. It kinda sucks though, because we really got robbed of a fun little custody battle minigame where the woman has a 90% win rate. The breakup sequence is honestly pretty sad. If you tap on the little thought bubble while they're depressed, you get this little flashback of the couple's time together and you just kinda slowly watch it fall apart. It perfectly captures the heartbreak of a breakup. The divorce one is especially sad, mostly because of the song that plays in the background. It goes pretty hard, but is also really depressing at the same time. I just think it's funny because I like to think that there's at least one person out there that went through a breakup or something and chose to listen to the divorce theme from Tomodachi Life to drown in their sorrows. Those are the types of problems you'll be encountering in Tomodachi Life. This is what the bulk of the gameplay is, but there are other things to do on this island besides solving problems. Let's explore Gay Sex Island together and see what it has to offer. Nintendo has a pretty good track record in terms of creating cozy little islands that make the players just want to live there. Woohoo Island and Wii Sports Resort feels so alive and feels like a real place you could visit. The Tomodachi Life Island feels more stagnant in comparison, but it still has this charm to it that I can't describe. It invokes a certain feeling in me. What's the word? It starts with an N. Yes, I am incredibly biased when reflecting on games of my youth, but even back in the day, I love this island. I know it's kind of a buzzword these days used to describe a lot of Nintendo games, but this island is cozy. A game succeeds in terms of atmosphere when it stimulates the player in a way that makes you want to live there. Sometimes. Also, this game has a pretty satisfying feeling of progression when it comes to unlocking new locations on the island. The tutorial sequence will unlock me apartments, the town hall, and the food mart, but after that, it's up to the player to keep solving problems and meet certain other requirements to unlock the rest of the island. If you tap on the location, it will show you what you need to do to unlock that specific location. You'll probably unlock everything within like four to five days. There's not a whole lot of game in this game, but that four to five days is guaranteed to be the best four to five days of your life because unlocking things is fun. Let's take a look at all the locales here on the island in rapid succession. Me Apartments, the place you go to interact with your Mies. As you add more Mies to your island, it will be upgraded to hold more Mies. Town Hall, it is the place to be if you want to do things like add new Mies or access game settings. Me Homes, a place where married couples go but still keep their apartments for some reason. Food Mart, buy food to feed your islanders. Clothing Shop, buy clothes for your islanders. Hat Shop, why is this not a part of the clothing shop? Pawn Shop, sell all your treasures you've have... Sell all your treasures you've... Have... Sell all your treasures you've... Have... 
Sell all the treasures you've obtained from games. Interior Shop, a place to buy new interiors for your Mii's apartment. Observation Tower, a place for Mii's to hang out, confess feelings, and play games such as quirky questions. The Beach, same idea as the Observation Tower. The Fountain, come here once a day to collect Islander donations. Compatibility Tester, test the friendship or romance compatibility of two Mii's. This is for entertainment purposes only and has zero effect on relationship success between two Mii's. Rankings Board, ranks all your Islanders by various categories such as romance, popularity, board charm, importware, houses special clothings obtained through Spot Pass or Street Pass. Campground, a place where Street Pass travelers from other islands can stay. Port, the place you go to receive things for the import shop. Concert Hall, a place for making your Mii sing various song genres and you can even make up your own lyrics. Photo Studio, take photos of your Islanders. Who the hell uses this? Leisure Island, a group of locations that consist of the cafe, park, and amusement park. All these are just a place for Mii's to hang out and where different events take place. 3DS Image Share, share in-game screenshots on social media. The News Station, keeps you up to date on all the latest gossip on Gay Sex Island and also announces the openings of new locations. And that concludes our island tour. Thank you all for attending. It seems like there should be a lot to do in this game, right? Well, not really. You see everything this game has to offer within one to two weeks. I love this game, and don't you ever forget that. Even my favorite games of all time have things I don't like about them. With Tomodachi Life in particular, the thing I don't like about it is that there isn't enough of it. Yes, that does seem like an extremely corny criticism of a game. Breath of the Wild is almost a perfect game, but there's one problem, the game eventually has to end! In the case of Tomodachi Life, this is an actual criticism. The dialogue and funny scenarios are amusing and give the game loads of charm, but after a week it feels like you're watching the same thing over and over again. It starts to feel like you're solving the same problems over and over again. And when you're not solving problems, what is there to do? There's games like Quirky Questions on the Observation Tower, you can make your me sing goofy songs at the concert hall, you can play frisbee. But again, that stuff is fun and hilarious the first few times, but it doesn't take long for it to get old. So now what are you supposed to do with this game? Well, if you're me, you'll continue to sink over 100 hours into the game. I know that may not seem like a lot to anyone out there who plays League of Legends, but when you consider this game is about as deep as a puddle, you'll realize that we need to convert the time to League time. After doing some simple math, 100 hours of Tomodachi Life is equivalent to about 8,000 hours of League of Legends. I do not know how I sunk so much time into this game, and I'm sure some of you out there have sunk way more. You know how all you fellow Zoomers out there get that itch every 6-8 to eight months to play Minecraft again? It's the exact same thing with Tomodachi Life for me. Even though I've seen everything this game has to offer, I still keep coming back to it. I think part of it is that as I go through different phases of my life, I meet new people that I can add to my island. My social circle is usually shaken up a bit, so I nuke my old island and start fresh. I may have seen all the wacky scenarios play out a million times, but I still find joy in this game. In conclusion, go play Tomodachi Life. Physical copies are a bit on the expensive side for an almost 10 year old game, but it's worth every dollar. If you don't want to pay 50 bucks, Aw oh, jeez man, you might be out of luck, if only there was another way. There isn't a lot to this game, but what this game does offer is really special. The humor, the wacky scenarios, the funny relationships, the charm of the island all add up to an experience you won't get anywhere else. I highly recommend this game if you haven't played it already, and if you have already played it, I suggest the replay. You probably have a lot of new people in your life that you'd want to add to your island, or maybe some new fictional characters that you've experienced that would help spice up your next replay. And that's all, very good game, pirating is bad, and farewell my friends!